Alright, so I got my email to log into the server, and actually I already filmed this tutorial, but in the middle of it, someone actually called me, so now I have to redo this and show you guys again. So, anyways, once you get your email, it gives you all the information you need to log in. So this is the IP address. You can actually copy that right now. We're going to need it. And this is the default username and the default password. Now once we actually log into the server, then we're going to be changing all of these for security reasons. But for right now, there you go. Now in order to connect to the server, remember I told you guys that we're going to be using SSH. Now there's a lot to cover regarding SSH and what I would eventually like to do is take a whole tutorial series and devote it just to covering every single detail about SSH but for right now I just want to go over the bare basics of how to set it up and connect to the server because this isn't really a SSH tutorial it's more of a tutorial on how to you know work with and administrate a cloud server so for now I'm just gonna go through this real quick go to this web page right here www.chiarc.greenand.org.uk, blah, 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 all that stuff. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be downloading and installing a program called Putty. So this gives us a bunch of tools to pretty much do everything we ever want to do with SSH. So this link right here, it's the installer. It's the easiest way to install it. So just click this, download it, and then once you have the file downloaded, double click and run it, and it's going to pop up a wizard just keep all of the default settings next 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 the only optional setting that I chose whenever I was installing it is I chose to add an icon to the desktop so if you don't do this then you're gonna have to go through your start menu but either way it's gonna give you this program putty now whenever you double click this as you can see I already have everything set up but let me delete this because my stupid friend had to call me All right. So whenever you first open yours, then this is what it's going to give you. So the first thing we have to input is the IP address. All right, let's say this is the IP address of the server we're trying to connect to. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in there. Now you want to keep the default port is 22 right now. Yes, we're using SSH. And also another thing that you want to do is you want to save these settings. So I'm just going to say this is droplet 01 and hit save and all this does is it says okay whenever you open up putty again actually let me show you so say we you know we're doing our thing came back to putty trying to connect again we just have to choose whatever session we have saved and load it in and check it out all of our settings are right there for us so it's pretty much just the easy way so we don't have to type in our IP address every time but I'm lazy so there you go so after this we're just gonna hit open and it's going to connect to it. Now the very first time you connect, you're going to get this error that says, hey, you're not doing this securely. And the reason for that is because whenever you set up SSH, the proper way to do it is you need something called a public key and a private key. Now, I didn't set those up yet. We're going to be doing it in just a minute. But for right now, we're just using our regular password that they gave to us by default. But whenever you get that warning, since it's the first time connecting to our server we really don't have a choice since we don't have anything set up so just hit yes and then you're gonna get this screen that's what we're looking at right now now for the login remember the default username was root and the default password was this so type root and hit enter and now it asks for our password now for the password you can either just type it in or we can just copy it now another thing I want to mention is whenever you're copying into a shell you just don't hold control V like you would like you're copying into a browser or a word document you actually hold down shift and hit insert now nothing's gonna appear on your screen because it doesn't display for security reasons but after that hit enter and you're gonna log into your account I was gonna say okay since this is your very first time logging into root you need to change your password so this is just again for security purposes the first thing that it asks for is your current password so that's the one that we just pasted in so just paste it in again shift insert and hit enter now it says choose a new password so choose any one you want hit enter and there you go so now we are in 
we can start typing and running commands. So again, whenever I run any command like delete file, it's not going to delete it on my computer that I'm sitting at right now. We are now in control of the server, so whenever we install something, it gets installed on the server. Pretty sweet. Now, one command I want to show you guys is clear, and this just clears your screen. It doesn't, like, you're still going to be logged in, and anything you did, it doesn't, like, remove anything. It just wipes out your screen. It makes it a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to hit clear, and another thing I want to do is this. I really don't like this big, blocky green little cursor so I like you know just a regular cursor like you're typing into a browser so I'm gonna hit right click this little um, windows bar at the top if that's what it's called who knows and go to change settings appearance vertical line cursor blinks and now you see my cursor I don't know it's just a little more natural feeling to me so we are now connected to our server now one of the first things that we're going to be doing is creating those public and private keys so we can actually use SSH properly but before we even do that there's one other thing that I want to do and I'm going to recommend that you do this every single time whenever you log into your server for the first time right now we are logged in as root this is the main overall master of the entire server now you guys may be thinking that's pretty cool I want to have full control over the server, over all the files, over everything. But the thing about using a root user is that it almost has too much control. In other words, it's really easy to mess something up. So you always want to add another user and give them proper privileges. Then if you accidentally, you know, hit like one letter on your keyboard by accident, it doesn't delete or mess with any files. So I'm going to add user, another user called Bucky and well it doesn't have to be Bucky whatever your name is and hit enter so it says okay you added another user his name is Bucky what's his password so I'm just gonna say whatever password boom there you go now for all of this you can just hit enter why does it ask for your room number I never got that full name I don't know I can kinda get you know like phone other but room number room number come on is the information correct yes it is alright so we just created a user called Bucky we gave him whatever password we typed in and if you have different people working on the server then you probably want to set up an account for each of them but there we go now take note that we are still logged in to root but eventually whenever we're installing managing files setting up our website we're gonna be logged in as Bucky because like I said it's a lot more safe that way now sometimes Bucky is going to need those administrator privileges he is going to need to access some of those files that we wouldn't usually have access to so in order to give him privilege to do that what you do is this type G P A S S W D and this command is just used whenever you want to administer a group and I'll talk to you guys about what that means in a second but put a space and hit minus a and this means add what user are you trying to add to a group we're trying to add Bucky to the group sudo now sudo is just the administrator group in other words what we're doing now is we're giving Bucky root privileges so by default whenever he logs in he's gonna have all those safe settings but if he ever wants to run a command that could typically only be run by the root user what he has to do is type sudo and then the command so in other words whenever he types sudo then the command then it says run this command as root user so now we have a user that's set up we ensure that he doesn't really mess anything up too bad and also we gave him root privileges so if he ever needs access to some files he can do that as well pretty awesome